this training video does not continue with the same project as in getting started with AVR Software Framework Parts 1 and 2. So, you don't have to watch Parts 1 and 2 first, but it is going to help. We'll start a new project based on the user application template for the UC3L0 Explained. Then we'll go through the process of setting up USART communications. We'll test the configuration using a local loopback, and finally, we'll send a message out to a terminal program. From the AVR Studio 5 Start page, click New Project. Under AVR GCC Atmel Boards, select User Application Template UC3L0 Explained. Name the project and click Finish. Before we can configure our clocks, we need to add the clock control service to our project. Do this by clicking Project, select Drivers and Services from AVR Software Framework. Type Clock in the search bar. Click Add to Selection and then Next. Notice that among the files added to your project is a file called sysclock.h. Sysclock is the name used to refer to the clock control service in ASF. Click Finish. In order to use the USART, we have to configure the system clocks first. In this case, we'll use the UC3L's Digital Frequency Locked Loop for its accuracy. By adding the clock control service to our project, a file called configureclock.h has been added to the config folder. This is the clock configuration file. Double-click to open it. Since we'll use the DFLL as the main clock source for our application, comment out the define associated with the default sysource rcsys, which is the default 115 kHz RC oscillator. Then uncomment the sysclock source DFLL line. Next, scroll down to edit the DFLL configuration. These are the clock source used as input to the DFLL, a multiplication factor, and a division factor. We'll use the 32 kHz oscillator, so uncomment that line. Change the multiplicator's numerator to 80 million, and change the division factor to 2. Then uncomment both lines. With this configuration, the DFLL output frequency will be 40 MHz. Save the configureclock.h file and return to main. Every driver or service that we add to our project needs some form of initialization. The usual name for the function to call to do this is module name plus underscore init. So, we initialize the clocks we have configured by calling sysclock init from main. We would like to set us a USART with the following parameters. Baud rate, 57,600, character length, 8 bits, no parity, and one stop bit. Initially, we'll test the USART with a loopback configuration meaning we'll physically connect the TX pin to the RX pin to read back the transmitted information. We will then configure a terminal program to receive messages from the board and echo characters on the screen. To add the USART driver, click Project Select Drivers from AVR Software Framework. Type USART in the search bar and select USART Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Serial Receiver Transmitter. Click Add to Selection, then Finish. We initialize the clock control module by calling sysclockinit. In a similar way, we initialize the USART driver by calling usartinit rs232. The Visual Assist pop-up shows us the parameters required to configure the USART, in this case, three parameters. A pointer to the base address of the USART module, a pointer to an option struct containing our configuration parameters, and the clock frequency of the USART module. Since UC3L modules start with AVR32, let's type and see what options are suggested. 
we realize that we need to check which USART is available to us on the UC3L0 explained board. So, let's navigate to the board header file. Go to the Solution Explorer, double click the UC3IOExplain.h file, and scroll down to the USART section. We will use the USART USB bridge as our USART. There is an associated if def with the conf USART USB bridge define section. This means that we have to add a define for conf USART USB bridge for this whole section to be defined. Also, to set up the GPIO pins associated with the USART RX and TX pins, we must define conf board com port. This is done in the file configure board.h. This file is located in the same config folder as configure clock.h. Open this file and add the required defines for conf usart usb bridge and conf board com port. And now we can add the usart usb bridge base address to the usart init rs232 function call in main. As you type the comma after this parameter, Visual Assist highlights the second in bold. We see that it's an option struct of type usart options t. Create a variable of this type and call it usart opt. As we type our new variable name plus a dot, the required options parameters pop up. So we can just start adding our USART parameters, 57,600, 8 characters, no parity, and 1 stop bit. First, the baud rate. Then it's the channel mode option, which we'll set to USART local loopback. And the rest of the parameters are all familiar to us. Go to the USART init RS232 call to enter the second parameter. Typing an ampersand, Visual Assist automatically completes using the single defined variable of the expected type, namely our USART opt. The last parameter for this function call is the input frequency of the USART we're using in Hertz. The sysclock module has a useful function called sysclock get peripheral bus Hertz which takes a pointer to a peripheral and returns the speed of the bus attached to that peripheral. Use this function with USART USB bridge as input. OK, we are now ready to test our USART. The functions USART putchar and USART getchar are available to us in ASF. Guess what they do? USART putchar takes the base address of the USART we're using, plus a character to write. Let's use hex 44 as our test byte. We need a variable to store receive data. Declare it with the uint8 t type and call it data. Inside main, Call usart getchar to return the received character into data. Add an infinite while loop to the end of main. Ready to start debugging? Click Debug, Start Debugging and Break. At a breakpoint at USART putchar. Add a watch to the variable data. Run to the breakpoint. At USART putchar, data has the value 0. Run past this line and click pause. Data now has the value hex 44. 
So far, so good. Let's move on. We're going to write character strings to a terminal. For this to work, you must install the Communication Device Class, or CDC, USB driver for the UC3L0 Explained board. This makes your board show up as a COM port on your computer. You can download this driver from www.atmel.com slash explained. Back in our project, change the USART configuration from USART Local Loopback to USART Normal Channel Mode. We can write a line of data using the USART Write Line function. Let's send, Hello, this is the AVR UC3 MCU saying hello. We're not using the get and put char functions anymore, so comment out these lines. Now, set up Hyper Terminal, or an equivalent terminal program, with settings that match the USART configuration of the UC3L. 57600, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit. OK. Go back to AVR Studio 5. Run the project and receive the message from the UC3L. As a final exercise, let's echo characters received from the terminal. We'll set this up in a do while loop. The function usart get echo line keeps returning the echo, and the loop breaks when the user presses enter, i.e., the UC3L receives carriage return line feed. Update the sent message to Type to echo characters. Then, when you are finished, press Enter, plus a line feed character. As you type into the terminal window, the characters are echoed back to the terminal by the UC3L. When you're done, press Enter. This exits the do while loop and makes the UC3L send the next message. Goodbye! Now, Keep on experimenting with your USART, and watch the video over again if anything is unclear. Goodbye!